Workers who caused a dollar sign 50,000 plus accident for their company but didn't get fired. What happened? I was an irrigator for a large alpine tree farm. One boss sprayed field with a really expensive pesticide. Other boss didn't know and told me to water the trees. I washed off $60,000 worth of chemicals. Got yelled yet. But other boss stepped in and took the blame. It was actually a great place to work. Dang. Good boss. Blew out $300,000 worth of lights. A children's museum in Santa Alicia has a massive cube on its roof as a sort of landmark. It used to have the edges light up at night. I was told by a supervisor it needed to be shut off. Explained I didn't know how. She basically told me to figure it out. Wasn't mean about it, but was clear. Long story short, it cost way too much to fix. So anyone from Orange County CA now knows why the cube has been dark for the last 10 years. Lol I'll think of you next time I pass it on the freeway. I worked in IT for a certain multinational brewery for a time. We were carting some servers out of an old data center and into the new consolidated data center in the next building over. The servers fell off the cart and shattered on the ground. Into a puddle. Dollar sign 56k all dead. Me and the other tech cleaned it up. Put the stuff in storage. Then went to tell the boss. He pulled us into his office. Closed the door. And sat us down. I was convinced we were both going to be fired. Instead. He started telling us a story about how he had been the youngest guy on the team when they first started rolling out the idea of computerized inventory management. That meant he had to fly out to each warehouse, oversee the offloading and install of the mini computer from major vendor. At the first warehouse, he watched the truck back up to the loading docks, where pallets of canned and keg beer sat, waiting to ship out the mini computer, roughly 8 feet long, 4 feet high, and 3 feet deep was rolled off the truck and onto the dock. He inspected it, since it cost close to a quarter million dollars. Once he unwrapped it and saw no damage, he accepted and signed the shipping papers. Then they huddled up to decide how best to move the computer to its new location. Unfortunately, the computer was a, on wheels, and b, on a not level warehouse floor. While they were discussing, the computer started rolling. It plowed at a surprising speed into a stack of pallets of canned beer. Splitting thousands of cans, fountaining beer all over the warehouse floor, crushing and soaking the new mini computer. The truck driver and the vendor tech straightened up, shuffled the signed acceptance papers and briskly walked out the warehouse door, letting them know to call when they were ready to order a new unit. We did not end up in trouble, since my boss figured if he hadn't gotten fired for exploding a computer and thousands of dollars in product, he could hardly fire us. That's a good boss. But even more so a good person. Was installing a $80k circuit card in a machine. New card looked wrong. Couldn't tell why at first. Supervisor took this to mean I was an idiot. Installed the card. Card smoked. Turns out. It looked wrong because it was missing a few IC chips that had to be installed immediately before use. Those ICS were designed to hold in the magic smoke in. I have learned after 25 years in facility maintenance that the color of the smoke, blue, black, gray, brown, white and red, yep smoke had a red tinge to it, correlates directly with how much money a replacement board is going to cost. Not me, but this was the largest frick up, multi-million dollar, I witnessed during my time in retail, and somehow nobody got fired. I worked in a warehouse selling bulk items to people, hint, America's favorite hot dog. I was stocking a shelf when I heard a loud crash, followed by one of the most horrific screams I've ever heard in my life. We get over the, the scene and find that a forklift driver had knocked a pallet full of batteries from the top of the steel, about three stories up, off the other side, crushing a girl I worked with. She broke her back in five places, her hips were completely obliterated, her femur broke. Basically this lady was turned into a human pancake by a full pallet of batteries. By some miracle she survived and recovered almost completely, but it took her well over two years to recover. The forklift driver wasn't found to be at fault because the pallet should never have been placed where it was in the first place. There was a small return to vendor station on the other side where she worked. There shouldn't have been any pallets above them that would have placed them in the fall zone. She was paid out a $1 M plus settlement and, for whatever reason, still works at that warehouse to this day. Part time and far away from the steel, the driver was allowed to return to work after the investigation concluded. 
Although he stepped down as a driver and eventually quit, I think he felt incredibly guilty because for a while they didn't think the girl was ever going to walk again. Moral of the story, don't frick around with forklifts and pallet placement. One little bump can really frick up someone's day. I was programming a CNC making prototype directional drilling tools. There were hundreds of thousands of lines of code generated. I made a decimal error editing a few of them. Scrapped a 120k part. Luckily we made two of them in case of an error. Boss wasn't real happy. But in the end the customer was happy and ordered many more and ended up being a major customer of ours. It's a bad feeling though. You get a pit in your stomach upon realizing the mistake. I my experience, you keep the programmer that admits to mistakes, rare mistakes, and fire the guy that never makes a mistake, blames others. I work in casinos and we offer lines of credit to the customers. A customer sat down at a table and asked for $50,000 which the pit manager gave them. Had the pit manager check our system, she would have seen that his credit has been suspended. She starts freaking out. The patron already lost the money by the time she realized the line was suspended. The customer refused to pay since he never signed anything. The state fined us another $50,000 for failure to follow our procedures. Pit manager kept her job even though it was the second time she made a mistake of this caliber. Man, being a degenerate gambler must be so much easier these days. Back in the good old days that guy would be at the bottom of a lake somewhere. I do irrigation for high-end estates. One year I forgot to unhook one battery operated zone from a faucet. The owners returned home in the spring to 6 inches of water in their house, with a waterfall running down the grand staircase. Had to gut most of their 10 million dollars house. Thank Jibus for business insurance. I bet that was a fun phone call to get. Hey, you destroyed our 10m house. Drove a dump truck into a 20 foot deep pit full of steel rebar. Jumped out at last second which most likely saved my life. Wasn't old enough to drive. Was told to do so by older employee in position of responsibility. Did what I was told. Put it in first rather than reverse. Looked over shoulder. Took foot off gas. And went forwards rather than backwards. Rebar was destroyed. Dump truck was a write off. As I was underage I was just given two weeks off and told to keep quiet. I guess they claimed on the insurance and said someone else was driving it. Holy crap dodging a lawsuit like an oversized bullet bill there. I work for a public hospital in Australia. No one ever gets fired unless you can prove gross incompetence or active attempt to harm a patient. Was working in sterile manufacturing. Training a new pharmacist. I was pulled away to help cover another area at the same time. Trainee pharmacist made up a drug worth dollar sign 60k. Or, using the wrong syringes. This drug had to be made up in special syringes because it leeches PVC. I got pulled up in front of the director and asked to explain why it happened. They weren't happy with not enough staff. Need more time allocated for training. But it didn't go any further. I worked as a toxicologist for a short period of time. We had these giant machines that would screen urine for drugs. And each drug had an assay that would be stored in these giant plastic containers with nozzles on the end so we could easily fill the machine's storage tanks. When the containers got low, about once a week, we would fill them with fresh assay that came in boxes. And it would take about 3-4 boxes to fill each container. My buddy and I were filling these containers, shooting the crap. When my buddy realized he put the wrong drug assay into the wrong container, like THC in that C bin, or something like that. He immediately had to tell the supervisor of the cross-contamination. That bin had to be drained, cleaned with DI water, and refilled. We found out that he wasted close to $40,000 in product. Each box of assay was between $10,000-15,000 depending on the drug. Since he already had 2-3 boxes in that container, plus the one that he poured in, it was quite a costly frick up. He did not get fired. Side story involving the same guy, after the urine is test on the machines, we would have to take out the 100s of vials of urine and dump them into these 50 gallon drums. The vials would always stick to the trays so you would have to knock them off. We would wear full face masks, gloves, waterproof lab coats, etc. One day a droplet of urine flew back from his vials as he was knocking them off and miraculously landed directly on his lower lid. Do you know your body's immediate response to having something wet hit your lips? It is to stick your tongue out. 
So poor Joe sticks his tongue out and immediate tastes some random person's urine on his lip. He drops everything and immediately runs for the bathroom and gives his mouth a liquid soap bath. Meanwhile, I am laughing so hard I am crying as he runs out. Good times. Good on the company for doing that. For serious stuff like toxicology, you want to make sure people don't have any incentive to hide their screw ups. A good friend of mine works for Bowers, a unionized commercial plumbing company. A few years ago when he was a journeyman he flooded the Kennedy Center in DC because he cut a pipe before shutting off the water. He fully expected to be fired but nothing ever happened to him. When I asked what the Kennedy Center did in response he just said nothing. I guess they have good insurance. He is a foreman now. I feel like cutting into a pipe filled with water should feel different from cutting into a dry pipe. I was a brand new network and implementation support engineer for a national online banking company. This was in 2000. The company was kind of startup why and still getting on their feet. The server rack was a freaking mess. Cables twisted all over each other. We had a new hire and we didn't have all the equipment. The IT director sent me down to the server rack to get a keyboard. We can log on remotely until we buy a replacement later just get her a keyboard now so she can get started. So I'm down there moving cables out of the way. The sucker was really dug in. Cables were blocking me from pulling the drawer all of the way out. So I'm down there for like 20-30 minutes. My arm jammed in, digging and digging, tugging, working the sucker out. We'd recently purchased a high-speed fiber optic network cable to ensure rapid access from the DNS server to the bridge. Of course this was back in the days of NT so a lost network connection was only fixed with an IP reconfig. I had no idea but the boys upstairs were dealing with frantic calls from a shitload of banking executives. All of our clients were intermittently losing each connections and getting failed attempts at bill pay and online banking access. The fear was that we were facing some kind of hacker attack. Nope. It was me. Tugging and pulling on the fiber optic cable. I came upstairs about 20-30 minutes later victoriously holding the keyboard. Boy. It sure was tough getting that thing loose. But I got it. Everyone staring at me with a pale expression. Finally. The network security dude starts laughing his butt off. I uh. I personally knocked out online banking for 75 banks. Two days before the end of the month. At about lunchtime west coast close of business east coast. Instead of firing me, my boss just took me out to lunch. He made up some bulls excuse for the outage. Sounds like they needed someone who knew how to create some nicely organized server racks. It wasn't me, but a guy on my team when I worked as an engineer for one of the big three major American automotive companies. At the time, they were using a straight out of the 80s IBM base program for part cataloging which had all but any checks and balances. Everything was coded with different three-letter codes, which were not acronyms, just random letters denoting different things that could be searched in a different system for their meaning. If you were to only type two letters instead of three, it would not allow you to save the changes to the part. However, if you were to type three letters that weren't the correct letters, it wouldn't stop you. A guy on my team fat-fingered one of his commodities during production release, and when the vehicle launched in the plants a few days later, the commodity pulled zero volumes for that variant of the vehicle. This means all the vehicles that had that specific sales code could not be built because the part was seen as non-existent by the plant system. Unfortunately for him, the code was a transmission code, of which there were only three for that entire vehicle. This means quite a few vehicles could not be built. It ended up shutting the plant down for over an hour. The rough estimate of profit loss that I heard was around $3 million. He wasn't fired, but had to do a presentation at our next town hall about fact checking your work. Honestly, it was for the best in the sense that it expedited the team working on a new system that worked much better to replace the IBM system. As part of your disciplinary action, you will need to do a presentation at our next town hall meeting. Oh god in that case please just fire me. I was 17 and I started working at one of my dad's businesses. When I joined, they were selling 5000 or leather jackets a month in Europe. I was very inexperienced but I convinced my dad to let me handle it. He agreed but said he'll hire an advisor for me so I don't make any colossal mistakes. On my second day, I authorized a previously cancelled order to be shipped which was worth about $68,000. 
The jackets were ready but due to being late on the delivery date, a new letter of credit needed to be opened which ensures guarantee of payment. I spoke to the customer in London who said he will pay if I ship the items but he won't open the LC because that's going through a lot of channels. I authorized the shipment and just a few days later the company closed and the guys who owned the company skipped town. My dad didn't say a word to me remarkably but I learned my lesson anyway. A friend of mine was filling up an industrial tractor tire and it exploded in his face. He hadn't been properly trained how to do it. He was in a coma for a few months, had facial reconstructive surgery, and tons of therapy afterwards. The company paid for all of his medical bills. I'm not sure how much it actually was, but I'd wager it was dollar sign 50,000 plus. After he recovered he was moved to an office job with the same company. Not happened to me but I witnessed it. Used to work for manufacturing pharmaceutical drug testing products. We'd make the assays and control material designed to test for drugs. These assays are used fairly quickly and a single order could be anywhere from 1-15k liters of the stuff. A colleague placed a pallet of 4, 100l drums next to our plastic wrap station. We'd wrap everything in plastic wrap before shipping to make sure nothing falls over. He placed it on the for pickup side instead of the for wrapping queue and another colleague picked it up with a forklift to move to the shipping area. The drums fell off the pallet and we lost an estimated $250 KUSD and about a week's worth of progress. He wasn't fired. They worked him to the bone until he couldn't handle the load anymore and he just stopped showing up for work one day. Not mine, but one I got to see play out. One of the first calls I got from a customer in my previous job, selling power plant equipment, was from a buyer who had purchased a little under $100k in products from my predecessor. He wanted to know why nothing he bought looked like the stuff he had been sent, thinking we got the order wrong. Turns out that sometime between the 70s when the site was built and 2012 the unit had been completely gutted and stuffed with another company's equipment. But for some unknown reason the customer failed to change their site drawings and so when this guy started a couple months earlier he had no way of knowing he was ordering the wrong stuff. I did what I could to help the guy out. We took back the common parts that we could sell to other customers. But he had to eat close to $70k in useless parts. His bosses weren't happy, but couldn't justify doing anything against him considering the circumstances. Was in Afghanistan and one of the QA sergeants. A really nice guy always very helpful to everyone was in charge of getting rid of some bad rockets that were set to be sent to EOD to be exploded. Was also in charge of the replacement brand new rockets that were supposed to go into inventory. He accidentally gave EOD the brand new rockets for disposal instead of the bad ones and they were disposed of. Millions of dollars wasted by accident and that's how our entire unit didn't get any awards for that deployment. I tried to copy paste a website from production to test. I somehow cut and pasted, client lost a good $100 K in website revenue while the site was down and nobody noticed until the next morning. I was relatively new and my managers have done this job before so they were waiting to congratulate me on my first big screw up. Another co-worker had completely deleted a production database with no backups before a week prior. So it wasn't even the biggest screw up we've had in the department. Not me, but my mother had started a new job in advertising. New manager was too busy to show her how to properly operate the system and the manual is completely useless to anyone who isn't already familiar with said system. She proceeds to make a mistake that renders the new ads of several companies essentially useless across an entire country. The ads can't be reshot. Each ad costs millions of dollars to produce, film, get approved etc. Ad company had to reimburse the cost to each company while also having to explain such a monumental frick up to national TV channels. Manager got called up to head office because, quite rightly, they were to blame. Neither got fired though. You have been visited by the chunk of good fortune like this post to enable good fortune for 26 minutes. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.